a lot of stuff in it got corrupted this morning. Um, so some of my tools that I have, like in the current version, um, aren't the final form, but uh, I can still do the demos and like it'll be okay. Um, and last year, when I gave this talk and the year before that, uh, I had like, it was about the Louise, right? And I had like the Sky News video about the Louise boat and all that stuff. And this year I don't have like an actual relevant video, but um, there's this like Instructables type series that I watch on YouTube uh, that Kaz showed me. It's called How To Basic. And so I'd like to show you how to install GTA 5. <laughs> settings again. Okay, thanks Steve. Um, okay, so here's kind of like the high level of what we're going to talk about. I'm going to do like a really brief overview of um, forensic stuff. So we'll talk about like disk-based forensics versus memory forensics and like what advantages and disadvantages that each one has to offer. Um, we'll talk about RAM disks. RAM disks are pretty cool. Um, you'll see that like it's this temporary allocation of memory that you can have. So, Sure. Like resetting, like, like that. Do I have OJ on your video software, Iron Geek? <laughs> Let me get the crash dump. I'll just put it in a windy buggy. It's fine. No, it's perfect. <laughs> yeah, your your slide deck isn't coming through right, but your other stuff is. Good. Uh, what do? We'll live with it. <laughs> we'll live with it. We have a plan. Okay. Deal with it, not give. We'll do a lot. All right. So, uh, Rambus, we'll see it's like a really cool, like, temporary workspace and something that's very easy to use cross platform. Uh, then we'll talk about competitive inhibition. And basically, uh, in competitive inhibition, what we do is pollute the memory space so that when you acquire a RAM, you just get, like, all this garbage. Um, then we'll talk about tool targeting. So, in the space of doing memory forensics, there aren't a whole lot of tools, so uh, it's like a limited range of stuff to mess with. Um, so that's that's some fun stuff. And then PE tampering, we'll talk, we'll talk about like from the perspective of being like on a box and having malware, like your malware running on a system. Like how can you mess with the memory forensics that's going to be done? Um, and so that's kind of like we'll leave off with PE tampering, and that will like kind of springboard into like more research that will be presented later on down the line. Um, and then other stuff, there's like a bunch of other uh, memory anti-forensic stuff that's been done. I'll also like throw out a couple other ideas that I have, and we'll just like try to LOL as much as we can. Okay, uh, so before we get started, oh, um, have you guys ever been to DotCon before? Anybody been to DotCon? Awesome. So at DotCon, uh, the way that they do their talks is like you have keywords, and if you say like the keyword is supposed to be like relevant to your talk, and if you say a keyword, the audience is supposed to yell drink, and I'm supposed to take a drink. And you can drink along as well, like it's more fun that way. But I know it's 2 p.m., so kind of like when you're starting to nod off. So uh, first three hands that I see for keywords. Let me see three hands. Toss. Memory. Memory is a keyword, but I got a drink to you. Yes. Forensics and robot. Troll. Yes. Troll. 
Memory, forensics, and troll. All right. Well done. <laughs> All right, so bro, am I even pro? Nah. Uh, I've never done forensics professionally. This is just me. <laughs> this is just me goofing off. And ABT, always be trolling. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I haven't messed with the FBI in my last year and a half. Um, if anybody's seen the last two talks that I gave at DerbyCon, they were anti forensics <laughs> talks, messing with the FBI. Um, but I haven't done it since I moved to San Francisco a year and a half ago. Uh, I'm not an expert, your mileage may vary. Um, you know, like I said, this is just me goofing off. And do all the illegal things. Like, just because something is illegal by the letter of the law doesn't mean that it's necessarily harmful. So, I've learned a lot of technology stuff doing illegal things. So, I'm not an expert. I have no idea what I'm doing. This is dog science. <laughs> Alright, meme theme, dream team. This is, uh, this is my meme for my presentation. Rustling of the Jimmies. <laughs> Jimmies may or may not be rustled. Alright, so the overview. Um, old and busted, this forensics, right? Everybody's, <laughs> everybody's been doing this based analysis for a long time. And the quote unquote new hotness is to look at memory, right? Like everybody. Oh, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> That's <are> vicious. <laughs> or enabling. I like it. <laughs> Alright, so um, there's all kinds of cool stuff in RAM. Right? Like, uh, who remembers the cold boot password that came out, or the cold boot paper that came out from Princeton? You can find encryption keys, you can find passwords. There's like all kinds of fun stuff in RAM. So, why do you do this, Nolan? Like, there's a lot of good stuff to be had. Like, you get a snapshot of the current system state. You can see, like, what's actually going on on the box right at that moment in time. Um, some malware leaves stuff only in RAM. Like, it doesn't touch this. Like, Metroid only, like, writes to RAM. Um, and like you can also find stuff that has happened on the system and been cleared out, but like is still resident due to artifacts. Uh, same thing like malware residue, like malware leaves stuff in RAM. Um, but also like when you're dealing with malware, you might be dealing with like stuff that's packed or protected or encrypted. And like just because it's encrypted on disk or packed on disk doesn't mean that it's not going to be unprotected or unpacked in RAM. So you can get some really good stuff out of memory by doing memory forensics. <laughs> and so like I mentioned earlier, there are like a few main tools that people use. Memorize is good for acquisition. It's made by Mandiant. It's a free tool. It's actually the first um, acquisition tool that I used that was like completely stable all across the board. Like I tried a bunch of variants of DD and like had very success with them. Um, dump it's good too. Like, Folks that I work with use Dumpit, they love it. It's uh, small, it's fast, and then uh, volatility, uh, open source framework, very uh, actively developed, has a lot of cool stuff in it, and uh, very useful for doing analysis on what you can. All right, so RAM disks. Um, like I mentioned, like with a RAM disk, you're just allocating a section of RAM, and you're treating it as storage. So it's kind of like your temporary workspace that gets all cleaned up for you afterwards. Um, and there's like a lot of cool stuff to to be had with this. Um, I've used Rambus for a while, uh, and I'll show you the script that I've got um, that uh, sets up Rambus in Linux, and then uh, we'll do a demo with a, with a tool in Windows. Um, so yeah, like I said, it's a temporary workspace, right? You, like, you, you allocate this like chunk of memory, you can do all kinds of things, in, all kinds of things inside of it, and then when you're done using it, you deallocate it, and everything goes away. So, um, just like quick demos, um, I'll show you my uh, my decrypt script for my server. So my server, um, I've got um, like a like a RAID five, and I, I have this like huge partition that's encrypted with like all my stuff, like all my dual core stuff that I've recorded, all my illegal things that I've pirated, all my exploits I've written, like whatever. And so um, to do that, uh, I have like to set that up. I have this script that I wrote. 
And like the important parts are like up here, right? So what we're doing is allocating uh, a RAM disk of eight megs, and then we end up copying my uh, encrypted key into it. We decrypt the key and then pass the key into decrypting um, decrypting the, the storage area of the RAID. And then afterwards, you just deallocate the RAM disk, and it goes away. Um, and that's like that's it. It's like super easy to use. And you can just get this like clean like workspace to work in. Totally towards memory forensics. Great, great. Um, <laughs> yes, it's it, it's uh this isn't metric though, so I don't know maybe that's why it looks different to you. <laughs> we use we use dollars over here, not centimeters. Just kidding. I love you, Steve. Steve picked me up in the airport yesterday. I love you, Steve. All right. Um, so I actually kind of planned ahead and made a video of the Rambus demo in Windows. So I'm just going to like actually show that real quick if I can find it. And then all the way ahead. <laughs> yeah. All Um, okay, so I'm just opening up a password dump here so that it's in Notepad and it's just opening up off my hard drive in my VM. Um, it's loaded into memory. Um, oh, shoot. <laughs> then we're going to take an image of RAM using dump it. Success. And then what we're going to do is... <laughs> <laughs> Memory, forensics, trolling. <laughs> and then we're going to record that line that we look for, I use a bot from the password zone, out of the memory image. <laughs> it's going to be worse than dot com. <laughs> All right. Again. <laughs> All right. So, out of the memory image, we found the password. Up, right? It's just there, clear as day, like in RAM. No problem. Cool. So now we're going to load up a RAM disk, and we're going to do like I've, I've rebooted since then to like clear out the contents. Um, and so now we're going to do the same thing that we just did, but in our RAM disk instead. Um, and then we'll see that it gets gets cleared out. So there's my password though, but uh, on the RAM disk instead of um, on coming off the hard drive. Same file, same same contents. And then we're going to remove the RAM disk so that will deallocate the memory, clear all that stuff out. I should write these down or something. <laughs> And then we'll look for the um, for the same line again, the uh, I user Bob user. Spoiler alert, don't find it. <laughs> it's okay, because I yelled spoiler alert first. <laughs> The 
monsters in the village are people. <laughs> <laughs> My ex-girlfriend's brother yelled that in a crowd, like standing in line to see the premiere of it. <laughs> As they drove away. <laughs> Very quickly. That's me being bored and playing with the mouse cursor. <laughs> I feel like a cat. <laughs> and nothing. So we're able to like operate with a RAM disk, like totally clean, good to go. Alright. Alright. Unrustling. Oh no. I think can you guys that? Yeah, okay. Cool. So that's RAM disk. Any any questions on RAM disks? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So you can you can do things like that's kind of like yeah, the or like if you were going to like dump credits or, or something like that, something that you didn't want to be detected that it happened in RAM, uh, you do it in, like working on your RAM disk and then like do your bad stuff, deallocate the RAM disk, like, good to go. All right. Competitive inhibition. So. Um, like I said, we're just going to pollute RAM with a bunch of garbage, and garbage in, garbage out. Um, shouts out to the InfoSec Reactions for the, uh, the animated GIF from the movie In Bruges, which I like. Um, so my weapon of choice <laughs> for this was PDFs. Um, PDFs are super fun because uh, they can be tiny on disk, but you can like put JavaScript in them. Um, they can do compression, so like that stuff decompresses in memory. <laughs> <laughs> and then when you acquire the RAM image, you just get like all this junk. But on disk, tiny PDF. Um, so this tool that I wrote is called War Bubble. And so we're looking for the um, for the reader process to load. This is one of the tools that I don't have the final form of because of the snapshot. But um, so we run it. Oh wait, it needs an argument. Uh -huh. So, let's see, there's, there's Fox at Reader. <laughs> and that number just keeps going up. Uh, let's see, let me move it over. There you go, kid. Is that showing up okay? And so basically, like, all that's happening right now is, is just eating up RAM. But, but the uh, the size of the of the file on this is nine hundred and eighty-two bytes and it's taking up hundreds of megs of RAM. Um, the trick with this is like if you get too big, the reader process crashes. Um, but there's a there's a balance to be had there, and you can fuzz it out. Um, this is super cool. Like um, it's fun because it's like easy to create. There's like a set of PDF tools out there by Didier Stevens, um, and he makes them freely available, so it makes it like super easy to create these. I guess I might as well just say tor.js. 
But anyways, this is, this is the JavaScript that's running inside that PDF, this tiny, right? Like, all it does is instantiate a variable to, like, um, iterate over a loop. It starts an array with TR and then populates the array with OLO.
can try and make it memorize. Nope. So, pretty cool. Um, and, like, e easy. Like, the, the tools don't do anything to prevent that from happening. Um, quick look at the source code. Okay, um, so this is just a really basic like process um, privilege grabbing. We're just grabbing like the ability to debug, um, which grants us like all privileges um, from Windows, and that lets us like interact with other processes and do things to them, like kill them. And then this is the the meat of Hunter Two. Um, Trying to get privileges. Uh, I have to use the like full disclosure, like I had to use the enum processes API. There's also a create tool snapshot 32 or something like that API that you can also use for process listing, but for some reason things like uh, dump it and memorize don't show up in that listing, but they show up when you use um, enum processes. So uh, I don't know why because I'm not that smart, but um, it works, so whatever, don't care. Uh, open a handle to the process. Um, Go through the process modules, get the, the name of the process that we're looking at, and then if it matches one of the ones that we want to kill, kill it. And then we just run in a loop and sleep every second. You can cut it down to like one millisecond if you want. You can change priorities. Like there's a bunch of mods you can do here. Um, but yeah, it's basically a just pull for target processes and then snipe them. Any questions about Hunter? Yes. You, you could put that in, like it's just another if statement. So you could say, like, oh, like, FTK runs with this binary name, and if we see it in memory, kill it. I keep checking on Kappas, because last year I went and got him a drink during his talk, and I'm worried that he's going to, like, bring me one and I'm going to be in trouble. Stay right there, Kappas. I love you. <laughs> Uh, okay, so if you're doing the acquisition of RAM on a box and your tool just keeps dying, probably going to be suspicious, right? So it's like, all right, like let's not just kill it straight off the bat. Like let's just mess with it. But uh, me trolling, uh, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna like really work hard. I'm just gonna make it miserable. So um, I, I took a look at like the tools and like how they do their thing, and when they dump out the image from RAM. Um, they just use a simple write file API. Um, and so what we're able to do is just hook write file and change the contents that are going to be written to the disk. <laughs> thanks. That's not that awesome, but thanks. <laughs> I appreciate it. We're really glad. Um, and so to do this, um, I just wrote like a DLL injector, which also didn't survive the snapshot crash. Um, but, I, but the DLL survived. So my DLL is called Lol Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, uh, so, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so basically it's just a modification on 102. Um, and we just pull for like one of these processes to be running, and then when the process is running, inject Lol Wayne and then let it do its thing, which is to tamper the output buffer. Um, I'm just going to run, uh, uh, I'm going to use a separate third party DLL injector that I got online. Um, um, oh, yeah, security is still that's right. That's right. All right, cool. So security exploded, uh, remote DLL injector. It's really basic. It does just like um, uh, open open a handle to the process, allocate a page in the process memory with virtual alloc ex, and then uh, use using write process memory. It writes in that page, calls the library, and um, using create remote thread, and off you go. So 
pretty straightforward like process injection, RDL injection. Um, all right, so. Let's see. All right, so we're going to acquire RAM and inject. Let's make sure that's an actual file. Yes, okay. <laughs> and then it just wants to fit. So we'll start our memory acquisition. Alright, one second. <laughs> we'll and then we'll get the pitted, which is 2232. And it looks like it did the injection. Cool. Alright, so this is going to be running for a second, so I'll take a drink. And then, uh, actually. I'll just show you guys. These are these are the Jimmy's pictures that didn't make the cut. <laughs> wow. This is what I do with my time. This is on the internet. <laughs> Once. <laughs> All right. Let's check my memory acquisition. Great. Oh, shit. <laughs> mm, still running. You guys want to watch another how-to basic? I don't saw I was seven.
getting your deposit back from that place. <laughs> <laughs> All I want to do is make eggs and troll memory forensics. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, there's a how to twerk and then like how to swing like Miley Cyrus and yeah. <laughs> Like 
like no problem. Um, so like MRIS doesn't seem to do any like CRC32 checking or like any kind of integrity checking of itself, whether on disk or in the RAM. Um, so you're welcome to tamper with it. So yeah, Memorize collects the buffer from memory, dumps using the write file, API, obvious target is obvious. Um, like I said, we just detour a write file, intercept the buffer that they're going to write out to disk, and change it to whatever we're going to write. Um, I downloaded the uh, acquisition on disk, um, so find it and trojan it, and good to go. Um, the charge generator is called vacuum only. But like I said, it's nothing special. There's plenty of examples for how to charge in PE files. Uh, cool. And yeah, so what we did, as you saw, add the import of our DLL, um, have it call the API for the export, and memorize, like, poisons itself. So in Soviet Russia, Jimmy's muscle you. Okay, um, last thing I've got quick is uh, PE tampering. So I've just got like one quick example, but there's a lot more stuff that's really cool to do with this. Um, so like once a PE loads from disk into RAM, um, there's like extra stuff in there that you don't need uh, to execute properly. But like analysis tools need that stuff. Like they need the PE header. Um, otherwise you can't like pull the RAM or pull the, um, the image of, of the uh, malware back out and do the analysis on it. Um, so, like, fun stuff to do. Uh, so, <laughs> this tool is named, the keys are like right next to each other, and it's from this bash.org excerpt. <laughs> <laughs> the keys are like right next to each other. <laughs> Alright, here goes. Okay, 
So let's see. Our PID column is second. Second. Okay. So our PID of <clears throat> keys are like this, or the keys are like right next to each other. It's forty twenty eight. And cross you can see no, I think. Mm, fingers crossed. Uh oh, oh Okay, so we're basically we're just trying to like dump the malware out of RAM. <laughs> cool. Um, but what we've done is zeroed out the header. But I did. Oh my gosh. And so since we zeroed out the header, it can't find the MZ header. And so we can't do anything with the, with the image. So if we take a look at executable 4028, the size of zero. It didn't, it didn't manage to acquire the process, even though the process is running in RAM. Like, right here, show it's running. It's, it's there, but memory forensics, double fail. So what's cool about this, like the source code is like super easy for it. Um, uh, so yeah, just basically get the base address of the process running in RAM. Um, make sure that it's got an MZ header. Make sure it's got a PE header. Um, check for the size of the headers. Uh, change the, the memory protection on them so that we can write to them. Zero it out, which is basically just calling memset under the hood. Change the, uh, the permissions back, and like we're good to go. And then this is just to hang out so that we can like successfully acquire a RAM. So um, like not a lot to it. There's a lot more cool stuff you can do with like if you look at like tampering with stuff like using like bad values like fuzzing out the PE headers. Um, there's like a lot more cool stuff to, to be done. Um, uh, so then just lastly, like real quick, um, there's a bunch of other really cool stuff out there. There's a whole toolkit called Dementia um, that this other guy wrote. Oh yeah. When this when this baby hits 88 jimmies an hour, we're gonna see some serious wrestling. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, these guys are on Suzuki. They did some cool stuff to beat acquisition tools. Um, really small mods, but again, like I showed with Hunter 2, like no acquisition, like pretty su suspect. Uh, Travis Goodspeed has really cool stuff as well. Um, Alan Band, so it's like super win. Uh, Mokovic is the guy that's got the dementia toolkit. Like definitely check it out. Like serious business. Um, like he has like kernel driver stuff, like works on XP, works on Windows 7. Like my stuff is like super trolling, and like his stuff is for real deal. Navy SEALs, meals on wheels. <laughs> um, so yeah, there's a bunch of other stuff you can do. Um, obfuscate strings, free obfuscate strings, so they're not clear and RAM. Um, you can put fake strings in there. Um, you really think someone would do that? Just go on web and tell lies? Uh, plant imports, like there's just all kinds of stuff to be done that like, lots of room for research. So hopefully you guys are interested or think it's lousy or whatever. And shouts out to Court and Buy, um, shouts out to HD Moore in Egypt, uh, shouts out to InfoSec Reactions, and my DJ Fuzzy Knot, and shouts out to the internet. <laughs> Any questions? Like last minute, maybe I'm time for like two questions or something. Thank you, memory trolling and forensics. I love you guys. I'll see you tonight at 11:30. We'll do wraps.